Now let's talk about validation and extraction rules in Visual Studio 2010's web tests. We'll look at first how to use validation rules that are built in, and then how we can create our own custom ones. So to start, let's look at the failing login web test once again. You can see that there are a couple of validation rules that can be set at the web test level, and we could add additional ones here as well. So we've got options for things like specifying an HTML tag, uh, select options, selected item, so a drop-down list or a list box. We can look at the inner text of a tag. We can set response time goals. We can look for form fields, random text, set uh, what the maximum response time can be, required attributes, tags, URLs, and this request length rule is one we're actually going to add here in just a moment. So let's look at this test. We'll run it real quick. And we can see there's some text on this last page here that we're expecting that says the login was unsuccessful. So we can snag that text, come back to our request that's supposed to have that, and add now a validation rule. We can say it's a fine text rule, and it's expecting login was unsuccessful. We'll say OK. And we'll run this again, and it passes. We can look at the details and see that that fine text validation rule passed. And here's exactly what it was looking for. So this makes our test a little bit smarter, a little bit stronger, uh, a little bit better of a test. But let's say we want to add our own custom validation for something that isn't listed as one of the options out of the box. For example, when we make this request, it's actually making a form post, and it's sending 46 bytes of data. And if we look at this request, you can see some more information about it here, but the content length specifically is the 46 bytes. So we're going to create a rule that will let us determine what the maximum request bytes are for a given request. And so to do that, we're just going to right click on our test project and add a new item. And because we have the CodePlex plugins installed with these templates, we're going to look for a web test validation rule. And we're going to call it max request size validation rule. And using that template, you can see that it's going to give us all of this uh, 100 lines of code for us out of the box for free. So we're going to put in a description, say request size is within limit. And then under properties, we're going to go ahead and add a property to this that's going to just be an integer. And so we already have that coded up, so I'm going to just grab it. So here's our maximum request length. It defaults to zero, and it's an integer. It's going to be in bytes. Now let's look at the rest of this code that it's given us. There's some properties here, um, and then we have a validate method. This is the main method that we care about. In this particular template, they're giving us a best practice implementation of pulling our validation logic out into a separate method that just operates on some particular value that we want to work on, and then putting our main uh, overridden validate method that has the validation event args that we're going to work with, limiting how much we're doing work in that method so that we're just calling into this other method. This is a good best practice to follow. Uh, however, in this case, we're going to just do it a little bit more simply. We're going to verify whether or not we have anything set for our maximum. So if it's more than zero, then we're going to go ahead and, and do this test. And I'm going to just paste the code in here in the interest of time. So if the request length is greater than zero, which means that we've set it to something, then we're going to validate that the content length is in fact less than the maximum request length. And just to be uh, completely accurate here, we'll say it's less than or equal to the maximum request length. So once we have that in place, we can build and go back to our web tests. And let's run it one more time just so I can recall what the byte limit was. 46 is what we're looking for. So we're going to add another validation rule. We're going to add a max request validation rule with my misspelling of validation there. And we're going to say that its maximum is 45. And we'll say OK. And run this again. And you can see it fails this time. And if we look at the details, we'll see that the maximum request length 45 failed. And you can see here the request was 46. And we'll come in here and change it one more time, let's make it 46, and run our test, and now we pass. 
So that's a custom validation rule for you. Next, we're going to look at how to do extraction rules. So for an extraction rule, again, we have the possibility of using out-of-the-box rules. So if we right-click on here and say we want to add an extraction rule, these are the options that are given to us. So we can again look at the selected option of a drop-down list or list box. We can look at some inner text. We can extract attribute, form, header, uh, text, hidden fields, or even regular expression values. If we want to write a custom extraction rule that would do something different, we can do that. And it's similar to what we did with the validation rule. First, let's see how we can use an extraction rule. So we're going to go ahead and say that we want to find some text here to pull out. We'll go back to the store manager and look at the extraction rules here. And you can see that there is a uh, extract hidden field to context parameter one. That context parameter one is then coming in as this hidden one with the dollar sign dot remember me item. And you can see that here if you change the binding, it's this one right here is what's being used. Let's add our own extraction rule to this. Let's run this test so we can see what kind of data we have to pull out of it. So we'll come in here and look and see what did our response look like. And if we scroll down to the very bottom, we'll see there is a uh, button here. Input type submit, value is log on. Let's pull out the button text and use that as our password. So to do that, we can come in here, have an extraction rule that says to extract the attribute value. And we'll call this dollar button text. And we'll say that the, uh, the tag name is input. The attribute name is value. The match attribute name is type. And the match attribute value is submit. So that will let it match the correct button uh, with a type of submit. And it will pull out the attribute that is uh, in the value attribute. So we'll say OK. And now we've got this button text. Let's go to our password. And we can click here and grab that button text now and change it from, instead of being data bound to our CSV, it's going to be data bound to that button text. And if we run our test now, everything still works. We can come in here, look at uh, this particular item, look at our request. And here's our password that we specified. So you can see that we passed in logon as the password. So that's cool. Now let's say that the existing uh, extraction rules don't quite do what we want. So we want to create a custom one. I've never had an uh, actual scenario where I needed to do this, but it is something that you can do. So we're going to come in here now and add a new item. And we're going to add a web test extraction rule. We'll just call it extraction rule one and add it. And this is very similar to the templates we've seen already. Again, we've got the ability to put in properties that can then be specified uh, in Visual Studio. It comes with some utility functions, and we can write our own. And then the method that we actually are going to use is the extract method. And the extract method is the one that we're overriding that allows us to actually pull out whatever it is we're trying to get. Now, in the interest of time, we're not going to do any sort of actual custom work here. Suffice to say that you would do your work right here inside that extract method. And that extract method is, is right here with this to do. And you would say that you wanted to pull out some you know, special bit of code that was formatted a certain way, such that none of the existing extraction rules were able to do it for you. All right, so that is custom validation rules and custom extraction rules.